Money made, money made, money made all day. You know, right here, a light million. Over there, counting up another million over there. Walk with me, ladies and gentlemen. Let me take you into my life. So, Andrew Jackson, of course, is on the 20. Benjamin Franklin right here. You know, money made all day. We in the bank. Doing what we do best. Counting money. In your own words, Dr. Umar, would you please explain to the viewing audience what is Black economics and how can we use it to advance our wealth position in the United States? Great question. What is Black economics and how can we use it to advance our wealth position in the United States? You know, when anytime we talk about Black business and Black finance and Black economics, there's two things that we have to bring into the equation. One is identity and the other is loyalty. Uh, without those two things, we never get to where we want to be. The reason why the black dollar is the easiest dollar to reap in this country, it's the easiest dollar to rob in this country, it's the easiest dollar to exploit in this country. And the reason for that is black people do not have a loyalty to black businesses above and beyond the businesses of other communities. Every other people have a loyalty to the businesses of their own race, of their own culture, of their own uh, ethnicity. Uh, the Chinese dollar is loyal to Chinese people above and beyond anybody else. Yeah. The East Indians dollar, the Arabs dollar, the Anglo-Saxon, yeah. the Jew, you know, the Latino, their dollars are loyal to their community. The black dollar is not. The black dollar has absolutely no loyalty at all to black people. So we have to deal with the issue of loyalty and we have to deal with the issue of identity because your identity okay. tends to dictate your loyalty. And so okay. a lot of us as American Africans, you know, we identify as American first. A lot yeah. of us, we don't identify as black first, which is ironic because no other people in America identify as American first. You know, yeah. they may love to be American, but they will let you know, I'm an Italian, I'm Irish, yeah. I'm right. Greek, I'm Japanese, Correct. you know, I'm East right. Indian. You yeah. know, the American piece is all fine and well, but they identify with that, with that first name, that yeah. hyphen that comes before yeah. American. Even when you look at the behavior in the Olympics, a lot of you know, uh, ethnic Europeans, who do they play for in the Olympics? Their yeah. native land. Most yeah. of them do not represent the United States in the Olympics. They represent their native land. So their identity and their pride within that identity dictates their economic loyalty. So what I'm saying is if we want to transform the dysfunctional economic behavior of American people, of American Negroes, we're going to have to reconstruct African consciousness, and we're going to have to resurrect a loyalty and a pride in African people. Because simply put, we shop to feel better about ourselves, and we, we shop we to self-medicate due, the, due to the oppression that we face here in the United States of America. We know that. But yeah. now what we have to do is add a cultural element into the shopping that says, if I'm going to spend this money, I at least need to make it a prerogative to spend as much of this money with people of my own community. In other words, mm -hmm. black people don't feel bad when they don't spend money with black people. Yeah, that's true. Black people do not feel bad. We can go shopping and spend $5,000, not a penny of it with a black person. It won't even cross our mind. And there's two that's reasons true. for that. Number one, we have been Americanized more yeah. than any other people in this country, which is ironic because we're the greatest victims of Americanism, but we're the True most that. Americanized. <laughs> so that's number one. Yeah. We've been Americanized and we have also been de-Africanized. And yeah. so because of that, black people don't really see any loyalty to blackness. We fail to recognize that without the black dollar, there will be no black power. And religion plays a big role in this too, unfortunately, okay. because religion has stripped us of our cultural identity and replaced it with religious beliefs. And okay. that's why black people are so loyal to their religions because they don't have any culture to be loyal to. So if you talk to the Arabs, right? Uh, Arabs may be loyal as Muslims, but they're Arabs first. Right. You see how that goes. Everybody yeah. is loyal to the ethnicity before the religion, not black people. Slavery stripped the ethnic loyalty and religion helped to keep it away.
Wow, yeah, that's powerful. Very powerful. Great points you are making. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, the second point um I wanted to talk about tonight, you know, with me living here in the Chicagoland area, and as I'm I know that you're very familiar with the migrant crisis that um, you know, we're facing here, as well as, you know, in New York and other big cities around the nation where, you know, the the governments are are placing the migrants in, in in a lot of the black neighborhoods, disrupting things. And um, what I wanted to know is, uh, with the migrant crisis, I want to say with us, with with black Americans, I think it may be the number two most concerning issue for us. I think the economy is still number one, but with all of America witnessing how the federal government, state government, local governments are in front of all of our faces making available tens of millions of dollars in funding and resources for the migrants to get on their feet whilst why uh why is it do you believe um black people continue to get ignored even though we're taxpaying citizens Mm -hmm. why do you believe we continue to be ignored even though we need the same kind of assistance because we're the only group in America that doesn't operate collectively in its own best interests. America is a collection of ethnicities. This country is only 200 and some odd years old. It's one of the youngest countries in the world, which is why everyone here has an ethnicity that goes before their Americanism, Italian American, Chinese American, Latino American, because America, as we all know, is land that was stolen and misappropriated, so forth and so on. So everyone in this country has a history before America. And because of that, they remain loyal to the ethnicity to which they belong, which predates the creation of this country. Everybody except black people. We have no economic identity as a race at all. So for example, as I travel all around the world, I'm noticing that the East Indians are cornering the fast food market and they're cornering the hotel market. I can't remember the last time I went to a hotel that wasn't owned by an East Indian. You see, so you take a look at Anglo-Saxons and their control of the banking. You look at the Chinese and their control of cheap goods. You know, every race is cornering a market to make sure their people eat. Because if I control all the Dunkin' Donuts, if I control all the Days Inn, if I control all the restaurants, if I control all the banks or the supermarkets or the automobile industry, my people are guaranteed food to eat, clothing on their back, and a house to sleep in because you can't purchase anything within this industry without coming through us. What are Black people trying to corner? Absolutely nothing. We are the consumers, and we are comfortable being the consumers. We do not produce. And a consumer is the equivalent of a financial slave. A consumer is an equivalent of a financial slave. That's what we are. We are the financial slaves. We are the dependencies of this whole American capitalist economic order. And here's the contradiction about Black people. We want to change our situation, Mm -hmm. but we don't want to change our spending behavior. Good point. This is the contradiction. Black people want to be free, but they don't want to put in the work to get there. And one of the first things we have to change if we're going to transform our reality is we have to change the way we spend our money. Yeah. But when you travel this country, you don't see a Black Wall Street operating anywhere, although everybody's always celebrating Black Wall Street. Right. Where right. are they? Yeah. yeah. Show me a Black community in America where we own the supermarket to feed the people, hospital to save the people, school to educate the people, bank to invest invest in the people right. in a manufacturing and distribution sector to employ the people and provide them with the basic needs that we all must have to survive. Where is it? I don't they see don't this on a Black Wall yeah. Street anywhere in America. And that's sad because as yeah. you know, we have a very wealthy Black bourgeoisie. We have a very wealthy Black celebrity and athlete class. Yeah, Still no Black Wall Street. Still you not. can go into the richest Black communities in America And guess what? They're shopping from white people. They're banking from white people. You see how their children are getting their education from white people. Go to the richest black neighborhood in America. 
Go Absolutely. to Brentwood, Los Angeles if you want. And guess what? All those rich millionaires and billionaires, whose schools are their children going to? Whose supermarket are they buying their food from? Right. You see how right. this goes. So Absolutely. if we want to change this, we have to change the economic behavior of black people. And that's going to be tough for three reasons. Black people are very selfish. We tend not to care about the best interests of the race. We only care about the best interests of ourselves. That's number one. Number two, our economic undisciplined behavior, we're not interested in changing it, changing it because black people love to look successful. And one of the best ways we try to make ourselves look successful is by surrounding ourselves with a lot of expensive, useless junk. Okay. Yeah. Why, do, yeah. why do we buy twice as many Mercedes Benz as, as Caucasians hmm. and we have less than a third of the worth wealth of Caucasians? Hmm. We own twice as many Mercedes as white people. Wow. And we don't Did even have one third of their wealth. You know why? Status symbols. Yeah. We are preoccupied with looking like I'm somebody. Hmm. And the sad thing about it is we got to have European labels in order to feel like somebody. Yep. And we yep. raise our children this way. That to yeah. be somebody, you got to have Gucci and Louis and hmm. Tesla and Mercedes. Hmm. Yep. And Air Jordan. And that's the sad because that means the children are also being raised on a diet of conspicuous consumption. So Absolutely. we have to look in the mirror and recognize that we are a big we're a big reason why we're in a condition that we're in, because we're the only people who refuse black people absolutely refuse to weaponize their money. 